Hey, Voo Kids Legends. It's me again, Mr. Dante. I'm so glad that you decided to join us again this week. Today, we're going to be talking about the Ten Commandments. I am not feeling this chair, so let's get rid of it. <sighs> now that that's gone, let's get into these Ten Commandments. First, I want you to do this. Take your right hand. Take your left hand. Put them together. Close your eyes, bow your heads, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for who you are. God, we believe that you are who that you said you are, and we know that you're in this space. Lord, we ask that you come alive off of these pages and into our hearts. In Jesus' name that we pray, everybody said? I said everybody said? Amen. Amen. Okay, so in order to get to the Ten Commandments, we got to re rewind and figure out where we got from. Now, Moses was a baby, went into Egypt, and he left Egypt. When he came back into Egypt, he told Pharaoh, hey, let my people go. When he let his people go, they went out into the Red Sea. Then God said, oh, my goodness, there's a body of water. Let me go ahead and split that thing open so that my people can walk across dry land and get to the other side. And then he swept away the Egyptian army, and now the Egyptians are gone, but the Israelites are, they're gone out of Egypt too, but they're really out there in the wilderness, and now they are wandering. What's leading them? God is. What did he send? A pillar of fire by night, a, pillar, a cloud by day, so that they knew exactly where to go, and here we are at Mount Sinai. Whew. Here we are at Mount Sinai. And Moses is going up to have some time with God by himself. He goes up for 40 days and 40 nights. Say that with me. 40 days, 40 nights. Yeah, 40 days and 40 nights. So he's up there on the mountain. Him and God are just having a good old conversation. And when he comes down off that mountain, God has given him 10 commandments. Everybody say 10 commandments. No, no, say 10 commandments. No, not 12. Say 10 commandments. Okay, 10 commandments. Yeah, he gave him 10 commandments. What is a commandment? A commandment is a rule that God's given you to live by. Now, he gave him 10. Eh, it wasn't, wasn't 12, right? It wasn't 8. It wasn't 9. It wasn't 11. It was 10. I'm going to go through each one of these commandments, and I want you to understand, and I'm going to help you figure it all out. So, the first commandment, everybody say, first commandment, we're only to worship God, the one true God. See, God is one God, but of three parts. You got God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three make up one God, and he's the real God. He's the real deal. Everybody say, real deal. Yeah, he's the real deal. He's the one true God. He oversees everything. He knows everything. He's all powerful. Why? Because he's God. He's the maker of the land and the seas. He created the heavens and the land. He created the sun, the moon, the stars, me, you. He created it all. He's the one true God. Commandment number dos. That's Spanish for two if you're paying attention. We are not to make false image of God. See, back in this day and age, they used to make stone idols and they would make wood sculptures and they would bow down and pray to those things. But that's not what God wanted us to do. He wanted us to give him our love. He wanted a relationship with us. And so he doesn't want us to bow down to wood and stone. That's not what God's all about. So commandment number two, don't make a false image of God. Don't worship idols. Commandment number three, do not misuse the Lord's name. See, the Lord's name, it's holy. And what holy means is set apart. It's different from every other word and every other name. There is no name that's higher than that name. And so when we use it, we can talk directly to God. And the beauty part of that is he hears us. He hears every prayer and he hears every time that you call out to him. So whenever you use God's name, remember, it's a holy name and it's something that God wants you to use. Everybody say, Cuatro! I'm really getting good about Spanish being down here in Miami. See, the fourth commandment is we should remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. See, what Sabbath means is stop. So everywhere, everyone, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, I want you to open your hands, take a step back, and freeze. Are you still frozen? I am. 
Okay, okay, wiggle it out, wiggle it out. See, to stop means that you're going to rest. And we always want to make sure that we're giving God a full day of rest. We believe that God can do more with six days than we ever could with seven days. And so the fourth commandment is always respect the Sabbath and keep it holy. Make sure it's set apart from the other days that we have in the week. Number five, honor your mother and your father. Now, I feel like I I don't really have to explain this one, but I'm going to go into a detail a little bit. Um, God trusted your parents for you. He trusted them, which means that they know what's best for you. So you should listen to their direction. You should listen to them. When they say wash the dishes, guess what you should do? Wash the dishes. When they say clean your room, you better, you should, you should go clean that room. When they say you're going to have fun at school, believe them, okay? Because they've gone to school already and they know better than you. So make sure that you're always honoring them by doing what they say, by not talking back to them and to listen to them because God trusted them with you and you trust God. It all works together. Rule number six, a.k.a. commandment number six. You shall not take anyone's life. Life is precious, and we only get one. So we want to make sure that we're treating others the way that we want to be treated. God trusted us, and so we should trust him and know that he knows best, so we shouldn't take anyone else's life. Commandment number seven, always be faithful to your husband and your wife. See, one day, Voo Kid Legends, you're going to be old enough, and you're going to be able to marry somebody, and until then, you're not, okay? So don't. Don't get married until you're old enough and you're ready. But when you are old enough and you are ready, that's going to be the perfect time to make sure that you honor your husband and your wife. You treat people the way that you want to be treated. You get them flowers. You go ahead and you take them on dinners. You hang out with them. You spend time with them. You give them quality time but you always want to honor them. Why? Because you are honorable. Not that they deserve it, which they do, but you yourself are honorable. You honor up, we honor down, and we honor all around. Okay? Honor is our calling here in Voo Kids. Okay. We're moving right along, aren't we? Commandment number eight. Don't steal. I'm going to say that again. Commandment number eight. Don't steal. I'm just going to say it one more time. I feel like the third time's a charm. Commandment number eight. Don't steal and don't take what's not yours. If it's not yours, it's not yours. And it doesn't belong to you. So you shouldn't take it because you're taking it from someone else. And they don't like that. Again, we want to treat people the way that you want to be treated. And if you don't want someone to take your stuff, God's kind of given us this one. It's kind of a layup, as we say in basketball. Don't take stuff that's not yours. Commandment number nine, don't lie and always tell the truth. See, the tongue has the power of life and death, and we always want to be using it for good, not evil, okay? Good, not evil. And stealing, not good. Stealing is not good. We want to make sure that we don't lie and we don't steal. So when you tell someone the truth, good. When you tell someone that's not the truth, not good. We always want to make sure that we're not lying and we're always speaking the truth. We're always speaking life and we're always saying things that are honorable to God. Okay, we've made it this far. We're nine deep. It means we got one more. The tenth and final commandment is be thankful and don't want what's not yours. See, we always want to have an attitude of gratitude because we have so much to be thankful for. Of course, there are things that we want, But in God's perfect timing, he will deliver those things if it's a part of his will. See, we want his will, not our want. And God has given us a spirit that's just always so joyful. And our fifth bouquet value is I will always choose joy. How do you choose joy? You always got to find gratitude. And when you find gratitude, you'll be happy with everything that you got. And you won't worry about what everyone else has. So those are the Ten Commandments. One, let's see, we went, one, we are only to worship God, the one and true God, that's right. Number two, we won't worship false idols. Number three, don't misuse the Lord's name. Four, we should remember the Sabbath, that's right, stop. (laughs) Wait a minute, yeah, keep it going holy. Uh, Number five, honor their mother and their father. 
And number six, you should not take anyone's life. Seven, always be faithful to your husband and your wife. One day, Vu Kids, one day, not today, okay. And number eight, don't steal, and don't take what's not yours. Remember that one, okay? I'm just throwing that out there. And number nine, don't lie, always tell the truth. And number 10, be thankful for what you have and don't want what's not yours. Man, I think these are, I think we can live by these. I think, I believe you. I believe in you. And I believe that God has given you all of these commandments, me too, so that we can have an abundant life. He doesn't want us to stay the way we are. He wants us to go to where he calls us. And the only way that we can get from where we are to where God wants us to go is to follow his direction. And that's what these 10 commandments are. They're directions from God so that we can live the life that he's called us to. And so if you believe that right where you are at home, I want you to close your eyes. And I want to lead you in the salvation moment. See, God loves you just the way you are. He loves you so much, he doesn't want you to stay the way you are. He wants you to continue to grow in relationship with him, and he wants you to continue to get better in life. How do you do that? You accept him into your life. See, the Bible says that you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, and you will be saved. What does that mean? That means that you have everlasting relationship and everlasting life with God. And if you've never made that decision to follow Jesus for the rest of your life, I want to give you that opportunity right now. I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. One, today's the day of salvation. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can take care of right now in this moment. Two, tomorrow is going to be awesome, but today is fantastic. You'll never get this moment again. Three, I love it. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I love you. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to be the light of my world. I believe that you died on the cross, but three days later, you resurrected from the grave. That same power now lives in me. I love you, Jesus. And it's in your name that we pray. And everybody said, man, food kids, we did it. We did it. We got through all 10 commandments. I'm so glad we went through the book of Exodus together. I want you to read it. And I want you guys to come back next week where we're going to talk a little bit more. But I'm not going to tell you what we're going to talk about because then that means you got to show up to figure it out. So, Voo Kids Legends, I love you. Thanks for hanging out. Mr. Dante, over and out.